Good morning. You join me from Barstow, California, outside of Walmart. I had to come here to get a new SD card for the GoPro because I took the battery out of the GoPro last night and managed to snap the SD card in half. I lost about two and a half hours of footage, some from yesterday, some from the day before, the drive from Arizona to California, sometime on Route 66. But uh, yeah, these things happen. So I've got a new SD card now and I've got a spare one as well. I've spent the last 20 minutes trying to open this packaging on this sand disc packet. I've not got a knife, I've not got scissors, the only thing I had was a pair of nail clippers and then a nail file to like prise the plastic off, that's it. So we're going to hit the road just now, it's 20 to 10 in the morning, so we're going to go from, just lost my train of thought there, we're going to go from where we are just now and the first stop is Baker's, Baker, Calif uh, California, and then it's off to Death Valley. So basically yeah, we're going to Death Valley today, let's do it. Right, so we're now leaving Barstow, or we're trying to. I went the wrong way because I have no sense of direction and I'm a complete idiot. But we're not going west, we're going east. Due east, boy. Just waiting for the sat nav to catch up because I've lost my bearings somehow on a straight road. What? Why would you send me that way? Oh, it's because we... Yeah, so because the uh, freeway freeway exits or entrances are on the other side to what I'm used to, I just driven past it, so I need to double back. Is that even it? Alright, you want me to turn into the retail part, into Burger King. If you miss the highway, just go straight to Burger King. Alright, I'm going to okay, okay, just, do a, just do a donut and just turn around right here in the street. I'm not even at Baker yet after leaving Barstow this morning, but I had to pull off the highway when I saw a sign for it. There was a sign for ZZY ZX Road. So if there's any fans of the band Stone Sour here, that was a song they did. It was titled that, and it, the, when I first heard it when I was early 20s, I was like, that sounds made up. But no, it's actually a real road, and we'd just driven down it. And it literally just takes you to the dry lake bed in Nevada. You can see, already a mirage over there it looks like it's water flowing but there's obviously there's none there because it's just an arid desert well look around just now it's so like we're only a couple miles from the highway but there's just nothing here got one road sign there's a sign just here before the pickup that says no motor vehicles on the lake bed so i'm just going to walk for a couple of minutes into the lake bed because it's still quite early so it's quite uh i don't want to say cool but you know it's not as bad as it could be but not certainly wouldn't drive in here and uh yeah i wouldn't walk more than 100 meters or so because i don't know how well you can see it but i mean it does look like it's just shimmering um shimmering water there but it's the most surreal place i've been it is magnificent so yeah it was just a dry lake bed can see here it's just it's like crusting away it's just layer upon layer of yeah such a bizarre place like when you're walking on it it's like walking on compacted sand well i suppose that's what it is god this looks like some sort of moisture here i think it's just dry salt it is weird. I've got a couple of trucks coming, probably wondering what I'm doing. Yeah, so I came off the highway from this direction coming this way. I don't know how far down the how far down the road goes. I'm gonna look on the map and see. I might drive down a bit further. But it is so weird. It feels like I'm on Mars or somewhere. Like it doesn't feel like it's on on this planet. I'm gonna go back to the truck. We've made it to Baker, California. I couldn't remember if it was in California or Nevada. We're still in California. And Baker is home to about seven, 800 people. It's not a small, it's not a big place at all, but it is home to the world's biggest thermometer. Are you as excited as I am? We're gonna go check it out just now. It's directly in front of us, but I'm holding the, uh, the surprise and awe for the meantime. So obviously we're in the Del Taco parking lot because 
that's all you get and are you ready for the magnificence wow i'm so excited to see it world's biggest thermometer that's all this town has to offer the freeway is right there we've got more fast food places there i'm gonna go for the little wander just now and see if we can see the uh, thermometer close up so like i say we've got del taco jack in the box a motel a shell garage what else is over here i think it's just more of the same we're nearly at the full moment. It's saying it's 91. I think it's the car. I, I changed the uh, temperature gauge in the car to centigrade instead of Fahrenheit because I couldn't be bothered trying to convert it in my head. So it's sitting about 35, 36 degrees just now, and it's 11:25 in the morning. And it's only going to get warmer as the day goes on. We've got the Highway Vibe radio station. Oh, we've got a gift shop. Highway Country. I'll show you ahead just now. So. The design flaw with the thermostat is, is that when you get close to it, you can't actually see the numbers on the side. So it is actually pretty useless if you're wanting to see it close up. I don't know if you can see it from the highway or not. I never actually paid attention because I came in from this direction. Here's the sign. I missed the parking for uh, the world's tallest thermometer. So I took the next right and went into Del Taco. Now here we go. It's even got its own gift shop. What a, what a world attraction. Baker, California, gateway to Death Valley world's tallest thermometer and that's it that's all this town i googled it to see what this town was known for you got the thermometer and the fact that there was parts of the movie fear and loathing in las vegas were filmed in this town up ahead you've got the mad greek cafe there's another shelf filling station beyond that and then that's the end of the town so it is literally just this one one strip so i'm gonna jump back in the car and keep going and get myself to death valley we're still in baker at the moment we haven't left so you've got the main drag which is just over here but i want to show you this this is the uh, failed attempt at the american dream we've got this trailer park here paradise motel motel home park mobile home park here's what you could have won we're now only about three or four miles outside of baker california on our way up highway 127 towards death valley but already you can see it's just one of the most remote places you could imagine there's a couple cars up there in the distance that have just passed, but aside from that, there's no one around. And this is the this is the main highway going to Death Valley from Baker, just off the highway that goes from Los Angeles to Vegas. So yeah, I'm going to keep going just now, but I wouldn't want to get stuck out here, so I definitely won't be going off road. I'll show you how much water I've got just now, because you never know what's going to happen. So I have a gallon, gallon gallon half a gallon 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 got some bread got some juice got some stuff that's been in the fridge we've got a full tank of gas in the truck it's a brand new truck so it shouldn't break down if it does I'm sure someone will stop but yeah what a place so we've made it to death valley the point of Death Valley that I would consider to be Death Valley. So we're going to get out of the car and we're going to have a look around just now. Before I get out, I've been in this truck for the last couple hours with the air conditioner on. So it's saying on here that it's outside temperature is 41 degrees. So I'm going to put the hat on because I'm bald, protect the heat, grab the phone, turn the car off, and brace for what it's like outside. give it that oh that is warm oh that's quite uncomfortable oh. so over here we've got a train i'm not sure i think there's a viewpoint up there so there's a car park over here with one car in it and i drove down here because i'm a renegade and i got like maybe 100 meters down there i'm like i probably shouldn't be driving down here i'm not sure how well uh enforced it is for any of the regulations 
I drove right past the ticket office when I came to the National Park. There's a big sign, it's like, I'll visit a report to the ticket office and buy a ticket, which I was going to do. And then the ticket office, it was like a little tiny garden shed next to two bathrooms. And the ticket office, I presume that's what it was, like had the shutters down, it looked closed. I was like, oh, I'm just going to drive past. There was no gate or fence or security and you're still on the highway. So I was like, oh, okay. So I just drove past. So I've not paid entrance to the park. So I think I'm breaking the law just now. But as far as I'm aware, like, there's signs like for the elevation. So this is the lowest point. So this is below sea level at the moment. So you can see, obviously, I mean, it's a lake bed at some point, but oh, it is warm. Like There's a campsite not that far from here that accepts tents. I cannot begin to imagine what it would be like to camp here overnight in a tent. Like I've walked from the truck there and already it's getting pretty warm. Like, I wouldn't fancy being out here in a tent and there's no shade as well. I mean, it is Death Valley after all. It's just so arid. Like, I mean, you've got some sort of vegetation here. I don't know what this is, but yeah, there's just nothing. There's nothing else. I'm going to walk as far as uh, this little monument here. But you can see the, the shimmering of the heat as it as it leaves the lake bed. To be honest, I can see tire tracks here. I could probably get away with driving all the way up here, but after my uh, escapades in Arizona, I don't want to take any chances, especially in a place like this. I've got no, mo no mobile phone signal, like even for calls, there's just nothing coming through at all. It's been like that for the last hour or so. Like the drive here has taken, since I left Barstow this morning about, I think it was 9.30 when I was in Walmart. So that was five hours ago. I have stopped quite a few times to take take pictures and look around at the scenery. But yeah, five hours to get here. Stay outside fence. Why would you build something here? Who, who started walking from New York when they got off the boat in the 1800s or whenever it was and was like, they got as far as Death Valley and they're like, yeah, we're gonna build a house here. This is by far one of the most mental places I've ever been, ever been anywhere in the world. Like it's just so inhospitable. I mean, there is stuff, like there's some form of vegetation, but it's just so dry and so brittle. And it looks like sand, but it's not, it's almost like concrete. Like it just doesn't move. You can tell it's a lake bed, but like it's just so, like there's just nothing. I reckon the pickup truck would be fine here. I could breeze over the whole lot of this because it's not sand. It's just so arid, it's unbelievable. You can see the remnants. I presume that's the remnants of the salt. Oh, do I want to touch that? Yeah, like it's just, oh, it's crumbling here. So yeah, I mean, it is just, oh, fuck, that's hot. It is just baked in sand. But you can see over there, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's like a mirage, it's like the shimmering, it just looks like water. And it is according to the the temp gauge in the car before I, before I left, it was 41 degrees. I think it's at 100 and something, 10, 15. I'll convert that for you. But yeah, I can only imagine, I've watched a lot of documentaries about people that get trapped in deserts, or they're in plane crashes, they've got to walk their way out or try and walk out. And most of them end up dying of dehydration. And I, yeah, it's obvious why, but it's a pretty brutal way to go, to be honest. Like it's really uncomfortable. I've been out here about 10 minutes from the car and I've got an air conditioned truck just over. I mean, this car's over there. There's a road going past there. So if anything happened, like I could get help. I'm in the national park. There are people around, but the idea of being in this environment and being lost and having no shelter, no water, no hat, no sunglasses. Oh, look, you can see the ground like crumbling here. So there must be moisture here. I mean, this is obviously the remnants of a of a lake or a river running through it. Yeah, it's getting softer here. Yeah, I'm going to head back to the car just now because this is actually really brutal. It's leaving footsteps everywhere. Probably not supposed to be here. Don't know. 
that would be unfortunate if I was just walking over some uh, nationally protected area, leaving my footsteps everywhere. Get back to the ticket office, I'll get arrested. It's like, firstly, you didn't buy a ticket. Secondly, you walked over the lake bed. You're going to go to jail. Send me to Guantanamo. Oh, fuck. That's me just about back at the truck, and I am so glad because it is so hot out here. It's just so intense. There's no shade because there's nowhere to hide. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed your time at Death Valley as much as I have. We'll see what we can see on the way back. I've stopped at this viewpoint. It's just up there. It's not that far, but it's still 40 degrees. So I'm going to see if I can make it up there. Oh, that's good. That's bad, like. Let's see if it's worth it. Oh. Nah, fuck. It's just up there. But it's fairly cloudy, but you can see all this, I presume, from a better viewpoint. But, oh, nah, it's not happening. I'm currently halfway between Death Valley and Las Vegas. I've stopped for the night in a town called Pahrump. And the reason I've stopped here is because I'm getting pretty tired. It's gonna get dark soon. I underestimated just the vastness of the US and the distances that I've got to travel. So tonight, I'm not in a motel or a B&B or anything boring like that. I am in a trailer park. I have rented a trailer for the night. That is how the Death Valley Nevada experience is going to end. Wait till I show you this trailer. It's impressive. Right. I'll just jump in just now. So, got my pickup truck. We're in a trailer park and this is my rig, my rig, my hog. Are you ready? Check this out. So we have a reclining chair in front of the TV. We've got a sofa. We've got a dining table. We've got snacks included. We've got a chandelier, a gold chandelier. We have air conditioning, a sink, a gas cooker, a microwave. Check out the fridge freezer. Bottles of water included. I wonder if they put ice in the freezer. They actually have, oh, well, a nice tray, it's empty. And uh, we've got the fan. If we go up here, we have the master suite. And we have another AC unit here, which I'm going to turn on because it's hot as balls in here right now. And a uh, sink with the world's smallest bottles of shampoo. Let's see what the shower's like. Huh? Oh yeah. Lock on the outside for when it's moving. I mean, I've seen way worse in hundreds of hotels. See what the toilet's like. I don't know about, I don't know if this is plumbed into the mains or not. Or if it's just a bucket underneath. But anyway, regardless of that, I think I've done well. And this is almost the finale of the trip. So it's me in a trailer with a pickup truck outside and I have something else to share with you. But just bathe in the magnificence of the trailer and the pickup. They should just give me my US visa right now and be done with it because I'm basically here. I'll be back in a moment with the surprise. Here it is. I don't mind admitting that I do like a red wine on occasion and I do like a Merlot. I found in Walmart around the corner, this bottle of Merlot, which is 1.5 liters, which is a lot, it's substantial. And it was $5.45, which works out at three pounds 99. Four quid for a liter, liter and a half of Merlot in my trailer with my pickup outside. And the only thing I'm kind of disappointed about, I was expecting a porch because I was wanting a porch and a rocking chair so I could sit on the porch drinking my Gypsy Moonshine, four pound Walmart, uh, four pound Walmart red wine, and I could look at my pickup truck. Sadly, I don't have a porch, so I'm gonna have to sit at the table, see what the view's like outside. I went to turn that and it doesn't turn. What am I looking for? I, do I, I don't want to just, I don't want to see. I'm scared to look out. Don't want to see, it's just another trailer. I'm going to go enjoy my wine. And uh, I think from Nevada, that's probably it. We've still got two more days of the car. 
So I'm going to try and go somewhere tomorrow and then double back on Tuesday because I need to return it early doors Wednesday morning. So I've got another 50 odd hours with the car and then that's it. So for the meantime, adios.